the college football experience, Liberty flames, 2023 season preview episode on the sports gambling podcast networks brought to you by Circa sports. Look, Circa sports is back with their Circa survivor and Circa millions contest. $14 million are up for grabs. Get all the details at circusports.com. And remember as always folks to let it ride. Hey, what's up? You degenerate gamblers. This is bill Burr and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Football experience. Liberty Flames 2023 season preview episode. You know, I love to talk about the Flame and Libs, and here yeah. we are. Look, if you're wondering just who the hell you're listening to, my name is Colby Swigga Database Dad, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick, this is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet speaks with his fists and lives by his wits when dundee happened he was a superstar i smoke and i drink and um i don't have stress and i'm healthy and you're nothing but a chameleon lemon-headed coward terrorist pussy and i'm after you buddy you're gonna pay for it good night love talking flame and live football patty c i am super excited this program is great Started in 1973. They were part. They were originally NAIA. They bounced all around. They've been in all of it. Shout out to Eric Green. Shout out to Malik Willis and all the greats. This might be the number one rocket ship of a program in UCF all of college football. UCF for them, football. right? Yeah, UCF yeah. for them. But same UCF, trajectory. Yeah. UCF a couple years ahead of them, but Liberty following that same yeah. path. No, I think UCF started behind them, though. Yeah, Liberty's been yeah, yeah. The the, 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 UCF's been on that championship track now for a few years. Liberty about to get on it. True. Uh, UCF's never had a head coach coach from a hospital bed. Let's go. Hello. (laughs) All right. Look, I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former former JMU Duke defensive back. I know Liberty fans might say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Right, but give it up for the burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing. Patty C in the place to be. Hi, well, let's get it going. You know they Flame wish they, live football. They wish they had burritos on the sideline. I love this program. It's coming along, man. It's coming along. Jamie Chadwell's coming in town. Bring in a huge strip club freeze on the way out. Hey, hey, to their credit, they go and they get dudes that can coach X's and O's. They Turner no Gill. Turner Gill got it done. They had Danny Rocco back in the day. They got guys, buddy. And I'm excited because now. Sorry, this music just gets me going. Patty, see, they're in a conference. They're yeah. finally in an FBS conference. And boy, boy, watch out because the group of five has an auto bid to the playoff. And uh, I think you should be super, super excited. Yeah. If, if you are a Liberty fan, I mean, um, when you consider that they are probably the class of this conference, almost, almost without any, you know, argument there. Um, and what they've done in recent history, their NIL collective, everything, you know, I, I hit up uh, Chad Hassan, or I think it's Hassan. I believe uh, a friend of ours that's been on the show before this big Liberty Fl- uh, flames fan. And he uh, was telling me like, he loves the fact they're in a conference. I was curious if they'd rather be independent or not, but you know, and he's, I think he got, got a good point that like, Going forward with that auto bid there, Jamie Chadwell, the way they spend money, I think, I think it could be a rising star. You know, this, this could be in a, this could be a power conference team in a few years. Let's, I mean, yes, definitely. If they, if, they, if, if expansion happens and they are having 10 win seasons routinely for a few years, yeah. they're going to be in a conversation. I don't know if the big 12 would come calling, but you know, maybe some kind of 
East Coast, Mountain West level yeah, conference. I, I mean, maybe the AAC will go. AAC maybe could, shit the Sun Belt. I mean, the way that I mean, maybe they, maybe the, the ACC. I don't know. Maybe there's life after. I you mean, know. right now they are a program that deserves to be in either the ACC or the Sun Belt if they wanted to. Be. I feel like they're actually kind of lowballing themselves by joining the current conference USA. No, because they have a group of five bid and they're going to go undefeated and make the playoff yeah. all the time. Maybe probably. they're just smart. Conference USA. Yeah, let's let's run a little comparison here on where you think they stand, whether above or below these programs, both right now and in terms of long term trajectory. Uh, FIU, better, yeah. Uh, Jacksonville State, better, but that's a good FCS, yeah. Right, that's coming up to the FBS. Yeah, they're making moves. Louisiana Tech, better. Middle Tennessee, better, but Middle Tennessee did beat Miami at Miami last year. It's a nice win, nice there feather. That they beat them in Missouri at Missouri. Not Conference that long ago. USA so, yeah. cap there. Yeah. New Mexico State, better, better. Sam Houston, better. Uh, UTEP, better. And Western Kentucky, better. But Western's been good for a while. But um, either way, they're and, and Kennesaw is coming next year. From so, a program standpoint, they're clearly the class of this conference. Now that is probably gonna the fact that the conference is. Probably the weakest conference in college football. Maybe the yeah. Mac is in until that. Liberty starts winning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are definitely the, the Mac doesn't have a Liberty. Yeah, like the Max. I mean, the Max better right now. Yeah, but you can talk me into the fact that CUSA Jerry kills building up uh, New Mexico State. If McIntyre can get any type of traction at FIU, which is an if because yeah. FIU's program, but they have a big enrollment. Look, the Sun Belt was shit a few years ago, yeah. and here they are, one and, of the best. Uh, Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee are like bowl teams often. Yeah. So like they're they're two solid teams. If New Mexico State can come up, who knows with uh with Sam Houston? I mean, who yeah. Jacksonville State? Like this could be a lot better, especially when you add in Rich Rodriguez, yeah, you add in Jerry or two, Kill. This might look different. I'm excited to talk about it. And what do you make of the Jamie Chadwell hire, Patty? Before we get to uh, all the stuff, Jamie Chadwell, you know, did a great job at uh, and he, you know, he kind of turned down Georgia Tech for this. I mean, you know. Uh, this is a guy who everywhere he's been, go back to his run at North Greenville, 22 and 14. He opened up year one, two and eight, then nine and three, then 11 and three in the D two. That's ranks. a pretty fast uh, transition, right? There. Yeah. Then he went to Delta state, but only for a year. So we didn't really, really get a, a full, uh, cause then he got the Charleston Southern gig and Charleston Southern. He goes 10 and three, eight and four, 10 and three, seven and four. And then he gets the Carol coastal Carolina job. Uh, and he goes three and nine as an interim. Then in 18, it was, it was Joe Mowgli again. So then 19, he starts off his own tenure there five and seven, then 11 and one, 11 and two and nine and three, a season ago, Patty C 39 and 22 overall, he's 99 and 57 as a head coach in college football. Uh, it's a pretty big get for, for the Louisville. I mean, for Louisville, for the uh, Liberty flames there. Um, what do you, what do you make of him? Got to agree. I mean, um, offensively cutting edge. You know, he's the guy, he's pr pretty much the guy that's combining, you know, you got your, your, uh, your read option stuff inside zone, outside zone and, and, and play action off of that with the triple option elements. Uh, and that's what the pistol provides you. It allows your quarterback to stay uh, with a fullback and a tailback behind him, So you can run that triple option stuff. Um, or you can also run a read option um, off of that in pistol. And then, so Look, it's just a, a concept that a lot of teams, uh, it, it prevents such a multiple and varied look that a lot of defenses struggle haven't, with it. Haven't yeah. been able to figure it out yet. Yeah. And that's why it's going to be fascinating to watch him with some of the talent. And also, like I said, the N the NIL collective and the fact that Liberty could be a sleeping giant uh, folks, before we get to, uh, we're going to talk about the Liberty offense, defense, special teams, uh, transfer portal. And go game by game on the schedule and, and project how they'll do in twenty in, in, in twenty twenty three. So before we do all that, though, I want to tell you that the Liberty Flames two thousand twenty three season previews brought to you by Circus Sports. Yes, yeah, Circa Millions and Circus Survivor are back, and fourteen million dollars in guaranteed prizes are up for grabs. Circus Millions uh, has you, how that works is you just do five NFL picks ATS each week against the script uh, against the spread and you know, winner take all at the end of the year. So you have that, you have circus survivor, just pick a different money line winner each and every week. Uh, can't pick the same team twice. If you've ever played survivor, that's how that works. Uh, you can enter in Vegas, play from anywhere. Sports gambling podcast crew will be out there last weekend in August. So feel free to hit us up. If you're, if you're going to be out there, then uh, circus sports.com for all the details. Once again, circus sports.com. What would you do with $14 million? 
It's a good question. It's a good question, folks. Check it out. Circusports.com for all the details. All right. We are back on the college football experience. Flame and Libs, uh, 2023 season preview. Patty C, uh, the transfer portal, kind of bonkers these days. So, uh, you know, five, five, six years ago, we were doing this. Yeah, you mentioned one name. Now, yeah. now it's like, oh my God, buckle up. You got to talk about it. You can't just escape it. Um, unless you're like army Navy or, or air force or, or somehow Clemson, uh, the, the, the only schools that don't believe in the portal. Yeah. Um, uh, Liberty, probably the last school. They, they are, yeah. they are a portal friendly program. Very, I, I mean, think. Malik Willis, obviously, uh, yeah. you know, came over from Auburn. So let's get into it because departing is cornerback Antoine Jackson. He's in the portal. Uh, hasn't landed anywhere yet, but uh, they did lose defensive end Christian Zachary to Southern the Jaguars. Uh, also, this was a big loss here at the defensive end spot. Steven sings to Auburn following Hugh strip club mm. freeze down there. Um, mm -hmm. Safety. Tim Kutris uh, is in the portal. Haven't found a home yet. Running back da Davion Hunter, day day Hunter. He was previously at Hawaii. He hasn't found a home yet, but he's in the portal. I'm, I'm sure, sure he will leading rusher, 854 yeah. yards. I'm sure he will. He's a good player. Uh, Great name, by the way. Yeah, very Day -day. good name. Very good name. They lost offensive lineman Reggie Young, the second to the Colorado Buffaloes and Deion Sanders. Uh, they also lost safe safety Robert Rahimi. He's still in the portal. Um, they lost cornerback Chris. Five M interceptions for Rahimi, Whew. leading the team. That's a tough one. Whew. These dudes aren't even landing anywhere, and Not they're just yet. sitting in the portal. Not yet, man. Uh, cornerback Chris, Chris Meganson to SMU. Well, not yet from what I can tell. You got to remember these sites sometimes load late. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but yeah, Chris Chris Megason cornerback, he goes to SMU. Uh, also a big loss. Yeah, big loss there. And then defensive lineman Dre Butler goes to Mel Tucker and Michigan State. Um cornerback Jacob Bodden also, I'm sorry. Offensive lineman Jacob Bodden in the portal as well. Hasn't found a home yet. Ahmad Walker at the linebacker spot. He goes to SMU, the Mustangs. Mustangs are buying some players. Yeah. That's like one NIL collective that might be able to, to, to outdo Liberty. Yeah. In, in the group. Well, of they're, they're like the same team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Liberty yeah. is SMU yeah. East. Uh, I want that rivalry. I want that rivalry. Let's make that happen. SMU yeah. Liberty. That, that's fun. That's fun. Ahmad Walker, third on the team with 63 tackles and uh, four sacks as well. Another loss. Well, wide receiver JV on Lofton. I, I, I'm wondering if there's any relation to James. <laughs> uh, he's in the portal. Mike Smith at linebacker, Patty C. This was a big get by uh, Dave Aranda and Baylor. I've heard Aranda talk about him. Leading tackler. Yeah. Big get. 85 for tackles on the year. And then tight end, uh, Tegan Martin, Tegan Martin, I think it is. Uh, he goes to South Florida. Um, this team got annihilated in the portal. It sounds well, like. Well, let me tell you what they got. But perhaps um, they bring in Victor Jones Jr. from the Nebraska Cornhuskers at a wide receiver. They bring in offensive offensive tackle Jack Tucker from the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They bring in Patty C, uh, North Carolina linebacker Bryson Jennings. So three power five guys just like that. They also bring in cornerback Joshua Wiggins from Colorado. So four power five guys now. Uh, they also bring in defensive end Gray Carroll from Georgia Tech. Five power five. Nice. Offensive, offensive tackle Xavier Gray from Akron comes in. Uh, then you have linebacker. Chike Nwanku from Abilene Christian coming in. Uh, wide receiver Errol Rogers from Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns comes in. Quarterback Trey Lowe, the third. This guy started a lot of uh, decent amount of games at Southern Miss. He transfers in. A Wake Forest running That's back. That's huge because their quarterback position, I think it's questionable. Could be. Could be. Uh, running back Quentin Cooley comes in from uh, Wake Forest. Wake Forest has had a great track record of running backs. Yes, they have in the portal uh, and going to other programs. West Virginia offensive lineman Jordan White transfers in, and then you have uh, Arkansas running back James Jointer transferring in, and West Virginia wide receiver Reese White transferring in. And I think that is it. Once again, this always changes. So if we missed a couple. I don't know. Um, Patty C. 
What do you make of the flame and libs in the portal? You still say they lost, right? I mean, three of your top yeah. six tacklers transferred out. Yeah. I think you got to say they lost unless, unless low ends up like starting, which I don't think he's going to start, but he's got starts. They got a little depth at the quarterback spot. You freeze must've been beloved. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. a likable fella. He coaching from the hospital, Ben. He's a likable fella. Buy you a lap dance at any time. Patty <laughs> That's <C>. right. <laughs> Uh, look, the, the I, I want to say I want to understand how the the good folks in uh, what Roanoke, uh, Lynchburg, Lynchburg yeah. uh, can reconcile, <laughs> you know, and I think they do love that about him, though, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, sure. strip club Saturday night, church on Sunday. Let's go. Uh, that's <laughs> not that's standard, right? It's uh, old like, school Southern style. Let's go. Seventieth in scoring offense a season ago. Once again, this is under Hugh Freeze. I don't know how relevant these numbers are, uh, but. Rushing offense, 50th, passing offense, 87th, total offense, 65th, Patty C. Defense, uh, well, we'll get to the defense, but uh, okay. So we got that. The offense has a lot of question marks, um, but Jamie Chadwell is Jamie Chadwell. You know, like there's a reason he was sought after. Everyone, a lot of schools wanted to get him. They bring back five starters that have actually started games. It looks like it's going to be a uh, Caden Salter at the quarterback spot. Now, Jonathan Bennett also got some starts, and they also have Trey Love. They have three guys. That are, are it sounds like a derby. They got depth though. They got depth if, yeah. if something happens here. Two thousand yard passers returning and uh and you said what the other guy they brought in had Trey a- Lowe started at, at Southern Miss and and you know he's he's a mobile quarterback so maybe Chadwell wanted to get some of that going. I'm not sure, but they might be. I mean, assuming Trey Lowe if he started there, uh, I got to pull those stats up. Assuming he had a thousand passing yards, how many teams have three quarterbacks <laughs> with a thousand passing yards on there? He got injured early though. Nine hundred fifty-four, just oh, short of a thousand. Go. Yeah, seven games last year he started. Uh well, the running back spot should be interesting because Quentin Cooley from Wake Forest is, is been flashing in spring. I kind of thought James Jointer would start. It looks like it's going to be Quentin Cooley. They also brought in Colorado transfer Victor Venn at the running back spot and Duquesne transfer Billy Lucas. So they they have four backs. Did a little trade with Prime Time. You yeah. take our O line, we take your running back. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that wasn't part of the Louis that, that yeah, uh, that was not the Louis. Apparently the, the O line was not the Louis, the, the defensive backs were the Louis. <laughs> uh, but then you have uh, Vic, Von blue at the, uh, or the wide receiver spot. They return uh, Noah Firth or Frith. I'm sorry. Noah Frith breaking in uh CJ Daniels coming in Frith, Good for 25 receptions last year. It's decent. What was that? Second on the team, nice yeah. little tight end production. And then they got Von Blue, a freshman. They're excited about the slot spot. Actually, and then, Frith, a wide receiver. Sorry. And then and then Reese Smith coming in from from Dub V. I mean, I don't know about the receivers. They're all no, Noah Frith is is the one that started a year ago. Yeah. Uh, tight end. They're bringing in a brand new tight end. I've seen Bentley Hanshaw, but Austin Henderson also could be in the mix there. They did bring in also Jacob Jenkins from Coastal Carolina coming with Coach. Uh, offensive line, Patty C. I am seeing three of five back. So, really, your quarterback who started games before Frith and three offensive linemen that you know, uh, Zelavia Galden or Gadlin uh, at the left tackle spot. He played some at Tulsa, and uh, center Jordan White got he played eleven games at West Virginia. Um, it's nice. That's nice uh, transfer experience coming in. And you bring back right guard Brendan Schlitter, and uh, Schlitter was a second team all independent a year ago. All right, I'm kind of sold that the offense line is probably better than what I thought coming into it. Now I have the wide receiver spot. Right. I have no, I have no idea. It's really hard to tell. Yeah, I would say the wide receiver spot, leading receiver, returning receiver, 25 yards, not a whole lot else. Yeah, uh, proven quarterback spot. Meh. The offense seems a little bit lackluster uh, in terms of talent, at um, least. And, and by the way. Uh, the the offense um is he's got co offensive coordinators in Willie Corn and Newland Isaac, both coming in from Coastal Carolina. I do like that. I do like that he brought in staff that had been ha, has been with him for a long time. That will probably accelerate the uh, ascension of the learning curve pretty considerably. Real quick, right tackle Xavier Gatlin. You mentioned, uh, yeah, I'm seeing left tackle here though. Okay, yeah. Let's just, I just want to point out the first three letters of his name are X apostrophe Z. I don't know if apostrophe is a letter, but 
Uh, <laughs> it's a great name. It's it's on the name the name of the year list. It is. It yeah. is G- since uh, Ginorius Johnson. <laughs> yeah, g- uh, graduated. That's right. right. He, um, he's our new Ginorius. The defense side of the ball a season ago. Once again, I don't know how how important these numbers are because it's a brand new defense, brand new offense. Uh, but 52nd in scoring defense, rush defense, 59th, pass defense, 25th, and total defense, 35th. Pretty good defense a season ago down there with the Flames. Um, damn good defense. Yeah, da- damn good defense. But you- a lot of the pieces missing. Yeah. We, we just we- did the Louisville preview. And uh, I, 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 look, uh, they're like first in the nation in tackles for loss, Liberty, and third in the nation in sacks. But just like Louisville, all their sack uh, statistics are gone. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it it makes it a little hard to uh, to forecast, but uh, they doing the co DC thing too. Skyler McGee uh, is is the co DC, I believe. So yeah, along with uh, new no Newland Isaac is the uh, OC. Skyler McGee, I'm showing as oh he's the main DC, right? Yeah, look at that. We got yeah. a coach that's yeah. willing to name one single coordinator on one side of the ball. I'm seeing three starters back from a season ago, Patty C. Uh, or and that is. Kendy Charles at the defensive tackle spot. Yep. He was a first team independent last year, Patty C. <laughs> uh, then, uh, well, when I say three guys, three guys that have started games, uh, strong safety, Quentin Reese is back. Uh, and then they brought in uh, Kobe Singleton, who started at Southern Utah, the Thunderbirds and the FCS ranks. Uh, Kennedy Charles, five and a half, six. Uh, Reese, Quentin Reese, like you said, five tackles for loss from the safety position. Pretty impressive. damn impressive. And the, uh, the cornerback was, uh, Singleton. Yeah. Uh, no, he was on Southern Utah. Though, oh, no, 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 no. Who was right? the, uh, one of these guys. I, I feel like they returned one of their, they, leading. they have a lot more transfers than I think we noted, but, um, the information always hard to come by, but, yeah. uh, look, defensive line. I'm seeing CJ Brazil. Brazil, I'm sorry, at the uh, defensive end spot. The uh, the tackles are going to be uh, Kendy Charles. Obviously, he's a stud, and then Jay Hardy, who came over from Auburn, um, in the linebacking core, breaking in a brand new linebacking core. Brandon Bishop is the name to I think circle senior. He's he was a transfer from Louisiana in the Sun Belt. They also have Tyron Dupree and Jerome uh, Jerome Jolly uh, and T.J. Bush. Um, those guys all kind of inexperienced though. Um, Dupree four sacks, a couple. Maybe oh. you see Bryson Jennings in there from UNC. Trying trying to forecast it all. There's some talent that's coming back, but it's not an absolutely loaded like returning. Yeah, roster. secondary's got question marks as we alluded to. Singleton and Reese have starting experience, but the rest don't. Um, kicker Nick Brown is back, and punter Max Morgan is a new face at the punting position. Although Nick Brown apparently did suck last year, uh, eleven of nineteen is not great, but long of forty nine and only one missed extra point. Patty C. Yeah, reliable from up close. Uh, there we go. So, what do you make of this whole team? It's hard to get a gauge on on uh, these these teams with these new coaches. College football two thousand twenty three. This was not the case three years ago. Yeah, four years ago, five years ago, when we were doing these previews, man, it you was knew what you were getting for the most part. Now you're just like, man, I got it's it's very hard to tell. But well, let's talk about last year a little bit. Yeah, can we? Sure. Uh, on the road, a one point loss against Wake in a game. Yeah, did they go for two? Well, I feel well, what I happened think they at, did go for two, and and right? didn't get I think it. They did. If memory serves me correct, yeah, they it's, went for two, did not get it. Wake survived, yeah. but but to be honest, though, they, Liberty got very fortunate to win the season opener. We watched that Southern Miss game, and it seemed like Southern Miss had the beat, and and they they ended up uh, you know somehow winning that game at four overtime, seven and six Southern Miss. So even if it was like uh, it's it's a good win, yeah, it's not a great win, but beat beat UAB, uh, beat Akron, even though it's closer score for and so, somehow uh, down the stretch when it seemed like you know, and by the way, they beat BYU 41 to 14 Patty C that's so bizarre because they squeak by Gardner Webb at home the week before BYU comes to town. Gardner Webb FCS playoff team though. Okay. Yeah. Watch out. Still um, a very hard team to understand. Beat and then Arkansas. beat the Arkansas Razorbacks at Arkansas. And then the back to back away, Jim, Jim Mora jr. Gets them uh, at UConn. the wrench uh, where everyone gets twisted. And then they should have beat Virginia tech. They, they let them off the hook. And then Jerry kill comes in and just annihilates them. Trounces them yeah. 49, 14, two point loss in the bowl game against Toledo. This is the hardest team to understand in all of college football. 
Would you say that? Very hard to say. Well, beats- that's why I think Chadwell, knowing Chadwell's history, look, Hugh Freeze is a very good coach, but at the same time, I kind of thought Ole Miss would do the same when he was at Ole Miss, where they could beat Alabama, but they could lose to anybody. Yeah. So I worry, like Chadwell's got a better track record, in my opinion, of keeping the glue together. Yeah, beating yeah. who he's supposed to beat. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see. While still having the the potential to pull a big big win. Yeah, we're gonna talk off. Uh, sorry, we already talked offense. These we're gonna talk uh, schedule. We're gonna go game by game on the on the Flame and Lib schedule and uh, project how they'll do. Hopefully you're watching on, on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience subscribe there. But also remember folks, we host not only college football experience, we host the FCS college football experience, the college basketball experience during the college basketball season. uh, I will be here every single night of the season. We've been doing this shit for years and, and I love Liberty's program. Liberty's got a great, great program. So uh, excited to, to be talking Flame and live basketball. Join the grind. Yeah, the with, with Richie grind. McKay and then and, uh, and and their their program. Also, the college baseball experience. We come together as one on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe. Tell it, Fred. Uh, I want to tell you folks out there that the, the Liberty Flames 2023 season previews brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Yes, best ball mania is here. And Underdog Fantasy is giving away fifteen million dollars in prizes. Patty C. Huh. Underdogs uh, uh, pick them is, is fantastic too. It's a great way to get down on your favorite MLB and NFL season player props. And folks, let me tell you, since we've been with underdog a while during the college football season, I know Liberty and the CUSA are playing all these weekday games. You'll have great player prop in with underdog fantasy that they, that, that you won't find anywhere else. It's fun. Hop on in, check it out. Uh, there's so many ways to win with underdog and underdogs available. in so, so many different States head on over to underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN for hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. Once again, underdogfantasy.com promo code S G P N. All righty. We are back. And if you're watching on YouTube, you see the graphics here. Uh, shout out to our graphics guy, Cam Kerr. Great guy. Uh, doing, doing, doing the Lord's work here. That's and, a beautiful uniform. They got it is there. a nice uniform. I like that uniform. The win total, Patty. He's sitting at nine. I feel like there should be like a flame of fire as their logo. Like get that, get that, get the fire emoji. They should do like the, uh, the truck and, uh, in, in twisted metal. Yeah. Like, what is that? Sweet tooth. Yeah. Or let's like, go. you know, just put half the Jersey in flame, like a fucking slim Jim. That's right. Like, you know uh, I mean? <laughs> fuck yeah. Like macho man. Let's just yeah. put, let's just wear ma- macho man's outfits. You no, know, bam, bam, right? big low. That's the wrestler that's you're it. looking that's for. It. There we go. You got the flames all up there. <laughs> Come on. No, I like their uniform, man. And, uh, and Patty, see, are you surprised at a win total at nine considering it's Jamie Chadwell's first year and all the, the transfer portal movement and the unpredictability on, 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 on what we just went through on, on the roster front. Well, Without uh, a, a glance at the schedule, you know, off the top of my head, I would say no. Uh, I know the Conference USA is is trash. So I think based on their recent history, because what have they done recent recently? Last five years, uh, starting in 2018, six and six under Turner Gill, then eight and five, ten and one in the COVID year, eight and five, eight and five. I think they got it going. Uh, they got it going. But man. nine wins is hard to come by. But I think they're independent. They're like BYU. They're independent schedule. Is harder than their conference schedule is going to be. Well, let's get into it because week one, Saturday, September 2nd on CBS sports network, the Bowling Green Falcons come into Lynchburg, Virginia and Williams stadium. Patty C Scotty Leffler. He, he, he used to coach in Virginia. He wasn't very successful at Virginia tech. And uh, yeah. I got Liberty going to one and out. Now I could see Bowling Green get pulling the upset because of, of the fact that it's Chadwell's first game. But I just think Liberty's more talented, so I'm going to take the Flame and Libs to get it done. One and zero. Yes, but this is a dangerous game. This is dangerous because game. you want to get the teams that get Chadwell in September. I think are happy yeah. because it's it's going to take some time. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico State beat the tar out of them last year. Patty C. They return back to back seasons to Lynchburg. On that alone, I, I have to go. Yeah, Aggies. I think I got to take New Mexico State considering it's Jerry Kill year two. I will take New Mexico State in that game, but uh, one and one. We, right, right. We got yep. a one and one. Now they head to UV Stadium. Um, this is tough. Buffalo was a bowl team a season ago. This is a game right here. This, this is, is a 50 50 game. This is right a here. game. CBS Sports Network also picking this one up. Um, I'm giving them a loss here. I think it's too early in the tenure, and I think Buffalo is starting to get it rolling. I'm going to give them a win. I feel like I might've given them a win on the Buffalo preview. 
But for right now, looking at it, having reviewed this schedule a little more or the, the, the roster a little more closely, not as confident. So I'm giving them a loss. All right. So Patty C's got him at one or two. I'm going to take him at two and one. I just think they have a more talented roster. They so. do. They do. Uh, back to back away though, as they head down to Ricardo Silva Stadium, Patty C to take AKA on the airport. The airport tar. Uh, you know, no one goes into the tarmac on Hangar Five and gets a dub. <laughs> Patty C, rule right. as old as time. I'll meet you here. You're giving them the loss here. Yeah. Well, I'm giving them a win. So we got them at two and two. You don't have to ha- give them the same record. I, I do. Yeah. No, I just feel like it's back to back away. It's September. There's a loss in there. Two Early on in this yeah. tenure. Okay. Then they get a bye week, which is good in September. If you have a brand new head coach, I would say. Then on a Thursday night on October 5th, Sam Houston State comes to town, Patty C. I will give them a win here. I think they're moving to three and two. Sam Houston State had a Thursday game the week before. So, you know, they still get their full week, but uh, 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 Liberty gets a week and a half. I think that benefits Liberty. So I'll give them a win there. Three and two. Now Tuesday, October tenth, Rich Rod hosting Rich Rod and Jacksonville State hosting Liberty. We said this was one of our low key mo- favorite games. Chadwell against Rich, Rich Rod. Rod, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. offense galore. Um, I don't know. This is tough, dude. The, the one problem is uh, that Jacksonville State, for as many teams as they whooped at the FCS level. The one team they played that was FBS last year whooped the tar out of them. That was Rich Rod year one. Yeah, they're bringing back their quarterback. Going Zion to Jacksonville Webb, yeah. State. <laughs> I'm leaning Liberty, but it's a sh- it's a short. I, I week. think I go Liberty too. But it's man. five days between this game. Does Jacksonville State have a bye? Uh, they are going Wednesday to Thursday, whereas uh, Liberty's going Thursday or uh, Wednesday to Tuesday, whereas Liberty's going Thursday to Tuesday. Tough point of the season for Conference USA going to these weekday uh, slates. Oh man, that, that's a hard game to, to to cap, in my opinion. I mean, you're you got five days to prepare, and one of those days is travel. Uh, and actually, no, and I'm one taking, day I'm taking, Sunday. And it's Jacksonville State's offense. Now, the only thing is Liberty's offense kind of similar, maybe a little bit. A little bit, but yeah. I feel like Jacksonville State's going to be a year ahead of them. On yeah, the, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Gamecocks. Uh, I, I don't think, know if I that's think foolish you or not. Me into that, yeah. Now stock still Rick stock still NASCAR driver <laughs> coming into William stadium in Lynchburg. So what we got them at, we got them at three and three then. So the, yeah. the, the wind total is nine Patty C. Well, we can't have them lose again. Yeah. Can we? The blue Raiders and Rick stock still coming to town. I will take the, the flaming libs to get this one done. They're a better team and they're at home. I think that's important. Middle Tennessee is probably a, a threat, but they get a full week to prepare. I think they get it done. All right. Now they had this is a big one here. This is it. This Houchin is the over Smith Stadium. The yeah. Push or the uh under really. Take depending. on the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. And Austin Austin Reed's back at the quarterback spot. West Kentucky nine and five last year. Uh beat a good South Alabama team in the bowl game. Um close loss against a good Troy team. Overtime loss against an Indiana team. Okay, I'll take the still Hilltop though. I, it, still, Liberty's a better program than Western Kentucky. No, I'm taking Liberty's not going to lose both of these away games, right? They're going to win one of these between Jacksonville State and yeah, uh, and who is the other one? Uh, uh, Western Kentucky and Western Kentucky. Probably right, but we gave them a loss in both. No, I'm correcting that. Okay. They beat Western Kentucky at Western Kentucky. Okay, I I'll agree with you. Then they host. Sonny Cumbie and La Tech. That's a win. That's a win. Then they host Old Dominion and Ricky Ronnie. That's a win. That's a win. Then they host Don Brown and UMass on November 18th. That's a win. And then they're at the Sun Bowl on November 25th, two days after Thanksgiving, taking on the Miners of UTEP. Tink, tink, tink. 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 Gotta um, love the regional rivalry game uh, on uh, rivalry weekend there. Uh, <laughs> we got the Thanksgiving UTEP versus Liberty. Yeah. That's a win. Nine and three, we're saying no, and that number's fl- a flat nine. Now let me ask you this: What do you lean though? Do you lean under or over? I think they're better than every team on the slate, but I think they're. I think I lean under because it's year one. They're prone, yeah. But I'll say this: They could go twelve and zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he's got them, like it's hard to to judge where this roster's at with so many new faces. Yeah. But is there one team that you tell me that they're like they're from a talent level, 
probably better than every single team on their schedule, maybe minus Western Kentucky. And, yeah, and they, I would say the at Buffalo, the at Jacksonville State, the ho- home against uh, Middle Tennessee, and the at Western Kentucky are four very tough games <laughs> that they need to come out at least. You know, one and three from if they're. But they gonna, could still beat all those teams. They could like, beat them all yeah, easily. They yeah. could be easily be twelve and zero. Yeah, and yeah. playing in, they won't get into the college football playoff on this schedule, but invitational, what have you. But they could find themselves in the Peach Bowl, you know, <laughs> somehow. Uh, I doubt that. I think that year one they're probably going to find themselves some losses. I don't know. This is really hard. I think nine. <laughs> this and three is the, actually, I think the hardest. We how, how far, we're like halfway through one hundred thirty three previews. Yeah. I think one this of the is, harder ones. I think this is one of the hardest ones because with even with Dion in Colorado, like I don't know the roster, but I kind of trust Sean Lewis yeah. to get it going. And I feel like they're more talented than a year ago. This one, I don't know because they lost some key pieces defensively. It's not like Colorado. And then they're they're entering conference play. So they're going from this crazy schedule that they would do a year ago to playing a bunch of teams that are kind of average. Um look, you know what I'm gonna do? Yeah. I don't know. Eight and four seems more likely than ten and two. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the under, but fuck, the I don't under. feel good about this one. But they could go 12 and 0. The staff continuity, bringing back coordinator, bringing in coordinators you've had years and years of experience with, that really could accelerate the the curve. And uh, from a talent perspective, like we said, they're better than all these teams, except New Mexico State. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> who'd have thought that? <laughs> Whooped their ass a year ago, but no, I I, I, I don't find feel it fascinating. Good. I don't feel good at all about this play. This is probably the, the the play I trust the least out of all of them. I'll take the under. I'll say eight and four, still a good first season for Chadwell, and I think it's a very very bright future for Liberty. Yeah, but I t- I actually think they're going to be nine and three. Yeah. I think they're going to be nine and three. But I, if there's one team that I could be wrong on, I think it's this fucking team because they could go twelve and L. They could also go six. Can you build me a case that they go six and six, Patty? Say, uh, New Mexico State gets some, Buffalo gets some, Jacksonville State gets some, Middle Tennessee gets some. Uh, Western Kentucky gets some, and then UTEP or something, and or Old yeah. Dominion. Not really. Seven and five. I see as the, yeah, the, the floor. floor. Folks, we're both on the under, but this is this one is hard. This is like this is this is why this job is getting harder and harder for for us idiots over here <laughs> e- each and every year. It's hard enough the, as is trying yeah. to use our two brain cells combined to generate <laughs> a thought for you guys, but now all the information is jumbled up. Yeah, uh, it, it's tricky. So look, uh, before we get out of here, I got a chance to sit down with one Michael Barker, AKA college football campus tour to talk about his experiences down to Lynchburg to William stadium. So with no further ado, here is that interview joining us on the college football experience. Liberty flames, 2023 season preview episode is none other than Michael Barker, AKA college football campus tour. Uh, yes, at CFB campus tour on Twitter. Michael does amazing work over there. He's been to every single college football stadium in the FBS and he documents it. Also give him a follow. How you doing, Michael? And appreciate you hopping on the show to talk about the Liberty flames. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Colby. Uh, this is a very unique, interesting program and I'm excited to talk about their stadium, William stadium. Yeah. I mean, this program's on the come up. As far as uh, you know, the history, I remember tight end Eric green from the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the day played for Liberty. And I remember the trading card back in the eighties because it looked like it was like, he took it on like a, uh, he was, he's wearing a uniform that looked like it was from a field that I was playing on. Uh, And really that's just, they were D three at the time. And now, and now boom, you look at them now they're in the FBS and just joined the conference USA. Uh, tell me about uh, the history of Williams Stadium and 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 you know your experiences there. So it's interesting because you know UCF has been on the fast track and they just got the P5 invite to the Big 12 and they started play in 1979. Well, Liberty is on a similar track. They started play in 1973 as an NAIA independent. They went to D2 in 1981. They went to FCS in 1988 and FBS in 2018. Uh, They were independent, and now they're in the Conference USA. So they're on the fast track, probably going to be a P5 in the next 10 or 15 years. And part of the reason for that is the facilities. Williams Stadium is one of the nicest G5 stadiums out there. When it was built, it only had 12,000 seats, but it's been doubled to 25,000 now. In 2009, they spent $58 million in upgrades, new field house, video board, press tower, and they just continue to dump money in there. Doesn't seem to be an issue. And um, it's like I said, it's one of the best looking G5 stadiums in the country. 
Yeah, I'm looking at the photos right now. It looks awesome. I also see that they got a pregame ritual, I guess, where some guy breathes fire. That's pretty cool. Uh, how many times have you been there? So I've been there a couple of times, but once for a game. I went there in 2019, and it was uh, it was against New Mexico State. And at the time, both schools were having difficulties scheduling games, so they actually played a home and home that year. Uh, the first matchup, uh, Liberty won in. Uh, Las Cruces, and then this one, uh, New Mexico State, they beat 20 to 13. And to be honest with you, it was an ugly game. Uh, it wasn't, you know, the, it was a battle, but nothing, you know, not like 500 yards passing or 200, 250 yards rushing. But uh, it was a good experience to go there. Uh, since then, the program has improved a lot. You know, we're talking about Malik Willis, starting quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. He was there a year or two after I went. So, um, I have over the years, I've gone to four Coastal Carolina games in the last four years, and I've made some friends with some of the guys on the coaching staff, and they're at Liberty now, and they have these Conference USA weeknight games. They're in the the mold of the Maction, and so uh, October 5th, they play a Wednesday night game, and I'm going to be there, so I'm excited to get a better experience at Williams Stadium and you know reconnect with some of those guys from Coastal that I know. Yeah, and they got. I, I do enjoy the fact that they have a passionate fan base. To me, like the, coming up the way they did and, and having that fan base, pretty awesome. I know basketball games too; they get pretty lit. That crowd down there does. So, in your experience, that New Mexico State game was it? Was it? Uh, was it a good fan turnout? Yeah, they're really, they're really excited about their program. They have a ton of pride. You know, they've taken a unique path towards where they're at now. So it's not like you know, they can see themselves in the mirror when they look at Old Dominion or they look at JMU, other, uh, you know, FBS, but not P5 programs in the same state. They've carved their way through each level. And I think these people are not only invested in the program, they put their money into it and they want to see, you know, it's also a great place to go and not that big of a town on a Saturday and hang out and get together with friends and family. So um, it's, it's definitely a place that people should check out. It might be underrated, um, as far as where it is on the football college football landscape, but I think it's a destination that people should check out. There we go, folks. See, that is why you should follow Michael Barker educational. Look, uh, th- honestly, it, like the, uh, the, the Twitter account you, you, you do their CFB campus tour folks. If you're not watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience, by the way. But uh, no, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy your page, man, because you, you, you do uh, all the games you go to, you document it very well. And then also you, you do all these historical shots. You know, I, I, I forget if it was Folsom field you posted the other day and showed it, you know, in it's original original uh, shot, you know, back when it was first built and, you know, it's just a cool follow, man. So I love the work you do, Michael, and I appreciate you hopping on to talk about William stadium. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And, you know, I'm invested in stadiums and it's cool to be able to share that knowledge with people on Twitter. So thank you for having me again. Anytime, anytime, brother. Take care. All right, that was Michael Barker. Patty said we gotta get to Williams Stadium for a game. I wanna see this stadium. I'm looking at pictures while he's talking there, and uh some of the uh model pictures look like they were gonna do like a, a multi-level terrace in one end zone as opposed to like a straight hill design that a lot of teams do. You know, which is typical of like old school teams that you know, you have that classic kind of grass hill that was there like in yeah. nineteen twenty. But, but I dig they kind of have like the cathedral look to a, a certain side of that. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, yeah. it's a beautiful, gorgeous stadium. I don't even know if they did that terrace thing. I think on one side, they just kind of did the USC thing, which is like, a, yeah, that looks cool. They covered it. You know, I don't know if it's in use, but anyway, I want to see this stadium in action because they did $258 million is not a small chunk of change. <laughs> yeah. What, where is that money coming from? Uh, this huge strip club freeze. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, Evangelical Christians apparently will throw, I mean, they like football, More a lot too. of money at this. Let's thing. go. This right? is like, uh, who, who's I'm not going to be the pac 12 and say, I'm going to shake a stick at them just because yeah. they think differently. That's right. All right. I want to see the BYUs in, in the, uh, in the power five. Yeah. I want to see the, the flame and lives in the power five. You know, the ACC would never go for it. The only chance they would have is the big 12. The big Dude. 12 is the, you know what the big 12, the big 12 is like the fiesta bowl of old. 
it's like all these other conferences are stuck in their like stiff, you know, traditions and their, and their whatever, like thought processes. And then there has to be one entity out there that is willing to go. So you're saying they grab Notre Dame. They already have BYU. What if they get Liberty? They got SMU TCU. Oh God. Like, that's perfect. It's kind of cool. <laughs> that's perfect. It could. And then all yeah. of a sudden they got like the best team in the country every year. Big 12. Liberty is on the radar. They should be. Let's go, folks. I'm on the under. Patty C's on the under, but thinks bright days are ahead. And we're not even that confident on the under. We just think gun to my head here. I think we got to take the under at eight and four is more likely than ten and two. Patty just for C this said year. that. But Chadwell's gonna have this thing going soon. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, 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 this is a question that we, we were thinking about earlier. I mean, let's just have this conversation now. Sure. Chadwell or uh freeze. X's nose wise. I think Chad was a better coach. I think Chad was a better coach. I think he's a better coach. So I think they improved there, but I don't know that it will show this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So bold statement. Yeah. Few freezes has beaten Saban a few times. Patty, still may ask you this 15 years from now. Yeah. Where will Liberty be? Will they be in the conference USA? No, I don't think so either. Unless the conference USA is a power conference, uh, yeah. but this program uh, schools that got too much money. They're, they're going to be successful. They're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, dude. They I, are going to be in the college football playoffs. Not dude. only that, they're when they go to the 12 team thing, this is going to happen on the Atlantic coast. There's nothing like them. I'm going to make a prediction. Yeah. They will be in the first, I'm going to say the first five years of this college football playoff. You know how we get the, they're going to be in there one, at least one time. Wow. Let's go. There it is. That is a bold prediction. Let's go. Let's go. You heard it from Chloe Dan first. Let's go. And, and, and hopefully they win some games. All right, folks, Let's go. subscribe to the college football experience. Cause we do this all year. We talk college football, even in the off season, every single week, every single day, subscribe to the college football experience as we break down all 133 college football teams. We do this each and every year folks with a solo podcast for each and every team in the land. And like I alluded to, uh, we're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever podcasts are, are, are found. Subscribe. Also, the FCS College Football Experience. Subscribe. Also, the College Basketball Experience. Liberty fans, what are you doing? Get over there. Subscribe. College Baseball Experience. Subscribe. The Big 12 Experience. S- subscribe. subscribe. We got it all. We got it all. We come together as one on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the College Experience. Subscribe. We are part of the Sports Gambling Podcast. So uh, get the SGPN app. It's free to download in the App Store and Google Play Store. You get tons of, tons of articles. I just shared a Conference USA preview today not, and I didn't write it. We have other writers there. So share that thing uh, or, or check it out. I should say, get the SGP and app and then come talk. Look, there's so many things that we talk about in our discord channel, sports related or just not sports related. Um, but we have a cool community of fans. I think you guys will dig it or girls, whoever out there in the universe, aliens, whatever, <laughs> Sam Cassell. Um, but uh, you know, I think I, uh, Liberty plays a ton of those weekday games. Well, we, we, we the, when the games are happening, the Discord is flying away. There's a college football channel. There's a college basketball channel. Get on over there and check it out. And this Sport- is one of the most fun teams to yes. talk about. Yes, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. You will enjoy it, folks. This is the college football experience, Liberty Flame style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here.